Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai Bahasham Rachahakwarash. Double honors to the apostles, the elders at Great Millstone who rule well. And as always, we give peace and salutations unto the elect. And I wanted to do a uh, quick response to this video. Um, it was loaded to the GMS end of day seven, um, which is where uh, we load um, one of the camp live shows on uh, Tuesday and Friday. Um, the title of this video is GMS Dallas meets Mr. I Don't Know. Okay. And the reason I'm responding to this, because this video gives you a classic Okay, the, the guy who came up to these brothers is a quintessential Christian. Okay, and what I mean by that is this is the expressed image of a delusional Christian. Okay, and like I always say, Christians only use the Bible, all right, to prove two things. Okay, first of all, they love to start in Matthew and they consider anything that you quote out of the Old Testament null and void. Okay, when you quote out of the Old Testament, they'll say, well, that's pre-Jesus. Well, that, that that's before Jesus. Jesus came and changed all of that. Okay, so they'll, they'll, they use the Bible to promote two primary things. That everyone can be saved. All right. All nations can be saved. That's the top, you know, um, that's the top doctrine, you know, in uh, using the scriptures. Everyone can be saved. Now, you know, the question is, what is salvation? You know, when you go into the understanding of what salvation is, it's clear in the scriptures that not everybody can be saved. Salvation is being beamed up, changed, and having the law, statutes, and commandments written in your inward part, meaning what? That death, okay, no longer has any power over you, okay? When you go into the scriptures, that promise is only given to the nation of Israel, and that is the second covenant, okay? Now, the second thing they use the, the scriptures primarily for is to tell you that you can eat anything you want. Okay, now, I don't believe these brothers went into that topic of eating anything you want with this guy, but this was a classic case of, you know, the uh, stubbornness of you Christians, you, you, you Israelites, you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans who get into that realm of Christianity if you do learn a few scriptures, the only scriptures you 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 care to go into are the ones that you can go into to make it seem as though everyone can receive salvation. All right. Now, when you believe in hell. OK, and I'm going to load, you know, this segment up to the channel when you believe in the concept of hell. It makes understanding the kingdom of heaven and, and the role of the heathen that much more hard. Because if you believe in hell, then that means what? That the way we teach the Bible, when we say only the Israelites can be saved, you're thinking that we're saying everyone else um, is just going to be burnt. Well, the scriptures don't teach that. All right. What the scriptures teach is that all of the heathen will be in subject to the nation of Israel. As a matter of fact. Let's get that in the book of uh, Daniel, the second chapter. Okay. Because you Christians think that you could just open up the Bible. Okay. In the book of Matthew. And somehow you're going to have full understanding of what it's talking about. Ignoring the history needed to understand the mystery. Now. The guy that was up there, he pretty much rejected the Apocrypha. Okay, that's hundreds of years of history. Okay, because when you go into the scriptures, Daniel the seventh chapter, 
uh, gives you a vision of four beasts, okay? And that's the Assyrian, Babylonian Empire, the Medes, the Persians, then you have the Greeks and the Romans, right? So, where in the Bible, without the Apocrypha, where can you go to get the understanding of the history of the Israelites in the Greek captivity? You can't. You're lost. So there's a lot of history you have to understand. Okay. If you want to call yourself breaking down these scriptures. And this is where you Christians err. You think that the history doesn't matter. Then you try to jump into the, the topic of the Gentiles. Okay. You, you try to jump into the topic of the Gentiles. Without understanding what happened to the Israelites during the Greek captivity. Okay, you can't just jump from Malachi to Matthew without understanding what, what went on with the Israelites at the time of the Greeks. That is vital information needed that you Christians act like you just don't need it. Okay, the, the, what does the scripture say? In Romans, the 15th chapter. Because this dude didn't know a damn thing. Anytime the brothers asked him a question, he didn't know. But what he did do was go to scriptures that try to prove that everyone could be saved. So he didn't know nothing. He couldn't answer any questions. But the only scriptures he did want to go into are the scriptures. No matter what the brothers brought out, he would bring it all the way back to the fact that everyone could be saved. And that the Gentiles that Paul visited were actual heathen. And we're going to get to that in just a second. This is Romans 15 and 4 says, so for whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. So here it is. Whenever you try to go into the things that were written aforetime, Christians tell you it's null and void. Give me one second here. All right. They tell you it's null and void. They tell you it's not needed for the understanding of Hamashiach Yahawashai, which they call Christ or Jesus. When everything that he did fulfilled what was written in the scrolls, in the, in the, in the Old Testament. And there's even more that he hasn't fulfilled yet that he's going to fulfill upon his second coming. Where he's going to gather the remnant and destroy Babylon the Great. And he, what does he say? I'm not going to meet you as a man. So the things that are written aforetime are very important. You have to go into the Apocrypha to understand why what was happening at the time of the Messiah and Paul and all of these great men of the nation of Israel uh, 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 happened. Why were the, 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 the Israelites called Greeks? Why, were they, why does it say there is neither Jew nor Greek? Why, why not any other nation? Why not the Hamites? Why not? What about the Moabites? So the, the Jews and the Greeks are the only two nations that can be saved? What does that mean? Well, we go into all of that, that history in our videos, man. And see, the, the Hebrew Israelites revolution, uh, you know, uh, uh, rejuvenated the spirit of Bible believers in the earth. Because you Bible believers were sitting back, comfortable, didn't have anything to say. Until you saw us stand on our feet as a great army, as the scriptures and prophecy said we would do. Then you all tried to come out and, and, and break down scriptures that you never even went into. But you watch our videos, okay, and, and, and the only thing you do is use the Bible for the purpose of saying everybody can be saved. Because you notice they, they know where them scriptures is at. But when you ask them any other question, they don't know. You've been fed a false narrative of the Holy Scriptures and our people, you so-called blacks, Hispanics, Native Americans, you Israelites are the only people on the planet Earth that run away from being special and chosen. And when you get Daniel, the uh, second chapter. In a 44 verse, after all of these beasts are taken down. All right, which when you go into the, the, the four beasts, they're all talked about in the Holy Scriptures, where the Israelites would be, what happened with them. 
even in prophecy, speaking of us being in Babylon, it's all in the Holy Scriptures. What's going to happen to this new Babylon? It's all in the Holy Scriptures, man. Daniel 2 and 44. And in the days of these kings, shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. And that kingdom is going to be a government set up on earth. Okay? And shall not be left unto the other people. Okay? The kingdom shall not be left unto the other people, but shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. So if these different kingdoms, which are heathen uh, or rulerships, are going to be broken and consumed, how can everybody be saved? How can the, 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 the covenant now be, be open to actual heathen when it was already signed, sealed, and delivered that was for Israel and Judah? Let's get that here in Jeremiah, the 33rd chapter. Okay, the kingdom of heaven, which at the time of Solomon, we had a prelude to it, is only for Israel and Judah. Now, when you deal with the heathen nations at the time of Solomon's reign, he dealt fairly with them. And after judgment, we're going to deal, deal fairly with you. But when you, when, you, when, you, when you lead with doctrines like hell, and all of this garbage that Christian teaches that comes from Greco-Roman mythology. Okay, you, 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 you're behind, man. You're behind. And that's what's happening with you Christians, man. You're behind. Okay, you're stuck in la-la land. All right, here it is. War is being waged in the planet Earth. All of this evil is happening. And the only thing you can find and use the Bible to talk about is how God loves everybody. That don't make no damn sense. Okay. Give me one second. All right. Come on, man. All right. So um, this is Jeremiah 33 and 24. Consider as thou not what this people have spoken saying the two families which the Lord have chosen, he hath even cast him off. Thus they have despised my people that they should no more be a nation before them. Now, listening to this video, okay, listening to this video, one of the uh, narrative that Christians love to run with is that the Jews denied Jesus or the Jews denied the Messiah, Right? So salvation was opened up to the Gentiles. Now, let's 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 rewind there. When it when you say the Jews rejected the Messiah, okay, what does that mean? Is that true entirely? Did every Jew, did every member of the circumcision deny Yahweh Shai? Absolutely not. The twelve, as a matter of fact, let's get it. <laughs> the twelve. Matthew, the 10th chapter. Okay, Matthew, the 10th chapter. In the fifth verse, these 12, Yahweh Shah sent forth. Now, who are the 12? These are all Jews. Now, what is a Jew? A Jew is a member of the southern kingdom. First off, Jew is short for Judah, okay, which is Judah, Benjamin, and Levi who were the primary tribes who were in Jerusalem at the time that the Messiah came onto the scene. This is why you have to know the history. Okay? They stem from these political parties. Okay? The Essenes, the Scribes, the Sadducees, the, the, the Sadducees, the Pharisees, the Zealots, the Essenes. These are political parties who you have to understand history to understand their stances. When Yahawashai came onto the scene, a lot of them rejected him, but there were some who followed him. Not every Jew rejected the Messiah. Peter is a perfect example. He is of the circumcision. And what is the circumcision? Those who kept the laws perfectly. How do we know that Peter was raised in the customs of the, of the law, statutes, and commandments? Because remember, it's, it's prophesied. Let's get it real quick. Uh, 
Zechariah, the 12th chapter. This is Zechariah 12 and 7. Yahweh also shall save the tents of Judah first. All right. And who was the head disciple at the time that the Messiah came onto the scene? Peter. Okay. All of the disciples were Israelites. All right. Of the southern kingdom. And there were other disciples as well. It wasn't just 12. These were Jews who followed the Messiah. Zechariah 12 and 7. And Yahweh shall save the tents of Judah first, that the glory of the house of David and the glory of the inhabitants of Jerusalem do not magnify themselves against Judah. And this was fulfilled, all right, at the time that Yahweh Shai came onto the scene. Now, this can also be applied to these times as well as Judah and prophecy is brought to his brethren in the, in the form of us standing up, going out on the highways and the byways, all right, and then the rest of the tribes will follow. But Zechariah 12 and 7 is, 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 is first and foremost speaking of Yahawashai when he came to gather the remnant from amongst those who were raised in the law, statutes, and commandments. And let's prove that Peter was raised in the law, statutes, and commandments. Let's get it. Acts, the 10th chapter. Now, this was a, uh, a vision that he saw where uh, this is Peter, a vision he saw. What did he see in the vision? Acts 10 and 12, wherein were all manner of four-footed beasts of the earth and wild beasts and creeping things and fowls of the air. What is this symbolic of? The Israelites in a, in a, in a wicked, vile state of mind, worshiping idols. Okay, and what were they looked at? Unclean. They were called basically uh, uh, uncircumcised. Those of the circumcision looked down upon those of the uncircumcision. They looked down upon the Israelites that weren't raised in the customs of the law, statutes, and commandments. As a matter of fact, when you get Ezekiel the 8th chapter, it gives you the direct precept to that. Ezekiel the 8th chapter. In the ninth verse, okay, it says, and he said unto me, go in and behold the wicked abominations they do there. Speaking of the Israelites, so I went and be, and I beheld every form of creeping thing and abominable beast and all of the idols of the house of Israel portrayed upon the wall round about. Jake was going off. They were in a Gentile state of mind, carried away of dumb idols. They were unclean in the eyes of the circumcision. They weren't accepted. Okay, that's why when Yahawashai came onto the scene and he gathered those from amongst the circumcision that followed him, who understood that he was the son of the Most High and fulfilled prophecy, he was showing them that the, 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 the beaten down, the downtrodden were going to be the ones who tru truly believed their message which they weren't even looked at as Israelites at that time. They were looked at as castaways. They were looked at as uh, uh, unclean, common, Levitically unacceptable, right? Let's see here. So Acts 10 and 13, it says, And there came a voice to him, Rise, Peter, kill, and eat. All right? I mean, ultimately kill the old way of thinking. Okay, take in this new, this, 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 the true understanding. Look, the Gentiles are going to be brought back in. Okay, and you're going to go, you're going to have to go preach this. And ultimately then later on, Paul was set up. Okay, and a great work was worked, all right? It says, but Peter said, no, not so, Lord. I have not eaten anything that is common or unclean. And he wasn't speaking of actually eating the food. But when Peter didn't really understand the vision, what did he say? I haven't eaten anything that is common or unclean. Meaning what? He was raised in the customs. Let's read it in NLT. No, Lord, Peter declared, I have never eaten anything that are 
laws, says Jewish laws, have declared impure, unclean. Why is this? Because Peter, Andrew, James, John, okay, and John the Baptist, even though he wasn't a direct follower of Yahweh Shai, he went and preached Yahweh Shai, he was born into the customs. His father was of the tribe of Levi, all right, and was overdoing what? Burning incense in the temple. So the notion that all the Jews deny Yahawashai is off, which is what this dude kept saying in this video. Okay, and he was getting sliced up. And the only thing he could do is just go back to scriptures that try to prove the point that everybody can be saved. But if you don't understand the Gentiles, then we can't even go into those scriptures because you're going to go into those scriptures without understanding. Okay? What happened is, okay, once Yahawashai gathered those from among the circumcision, okay, those who were raised in the customs, who put off their political ideologies and, and, and cling to Yahawashai when he came, okay, there were a large amount who did reject him from amongst the circumcision. But the notion that every Israelite, okay, as a matter of fact, the notion that every Jew or every member of the circumcision, because you have the Jews or what, Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, okay, which those are the tribes who fought for some form of revelance of the nation of Israel, all right, that a lot of them were off, but for the purpose of our, you know, us standing and, and having a temple and fighting for some, you know, the sort of uh, state of the Jews, which at the time Yahweh Shai Canaan were vassals to the uh, Roman Empire, they have a very important history you should know about. All right, the Maccabees, you know, uh, uh, the Hasmonean dynasty, the different political parties that were around at the time of Yahweh Shai and their history. These Jews were high minded. Okay, to the temple and, and, and to what their fathers had accomplished as far as us keeping his, our, our, our history relevant. Let's get a. Uh, the book of Psalms. Oh, yep, Hosea 11 and 12. Okay. Because there was a lot of friction between the northern and southern kingdom, man. And you had remnants of the southern of the northern kingdom who were still in a roundabout Jerusalem at the time. Okay? So they were completely looked at, going back to even to the, the kings that sat on the throne of David after the split of Solomon. You had maybe seven of the, the, the southern kingdom that did right, seven kings who sat on the throne of David, Josiah being the last one to do right. But of the northern kingdom, none of them did good. So they had already been looked at as, you know, castaways. And how much more the, 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 the Jakes who were raised in Greco-Roman customs who had completely fell away from their heritage and, 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 and uh, uh, nationality as Israelites. They were all looked at as no people. Nobody. This is Hosea 11 and 12. Ephraim compassed me about with lies in the house of Israel with deceit. Ephraim was what? Carried away of idols, man. None of the, when after the split, you had Rehoboam, which was Solomon's direct son of an Ammonitess uh, princess who sat on the throne of David. Okay, and what happened? He, he went immediately into idol worship. Then on the, no, the northern kingdom, I believe uh, 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 Jeroboam, all right, which that was Sol one of Solomon's hit, hit men. It wasn't his son. He sat on the throne. I believe he was Judah as well, but he, was, he reigned over the northern kingdom and nothing but wickedness was spread forth of those tribes. And as... You go if you go down the line, none of the northern kingdom kings did good. They were all wicked and evil and, and went off. So there's a history between Judah and Ephraim that has to be understood to understand the Bible. 
The, if you were of the northern kingdom, the Jews looked all the way down on you. If you were raised in Greco-Roman customs, they looked all the way down on you. You were a Gentile. You were not a people. Okay? So those Jews who had fought for you know, a relevant, you know, Israel, the name of Israel staying alive in the temple and all of that until Yahweh came, you know, they were proud of that history. And though they were, a lot of them went off, we can't ignore the importance of what they did to keep, you know, Israel going. Hosea 11 and 12, Ephraim compassed me about with lies in the house of Israel with deceit, but Judah yet ruleth with, <laughs> with the most high and is faithful with the saints because you had those, okay, the tents of Judah who had to be raised up first. Okay, because it was it was through Judah where Yahweh would come, it was, but it was through Judah who had fought. Because remember, the, the other tribes that went all the way came all the way to the Americas. So Judah looked at them as castaways, if they you know pretty much turn their back on the Lord, or that they were a no people, man. This is why in the book of Acts, the tenth chapter, real quick, Acts ten, as Cornelius. Is being brought in. That's why he had to go to uh, David, Peter first. He had to get the sure mercies of David. As you go down, as uh, Peter is explaining himself. Let's see here. It's about 28. Yep. He's explaining the vision he had and, you know, the Cornelius situation. All right, Acts 10 and 28, and he said unto them, ye know how that it is an unlawful thing that a man that is a Jew, okay, okay, that can be either of the tribe of Judah or ultimately Judah, Benjamin, and Levi were just called Jews, okay, the circumcision. They were raised in the customs, okay, their parents were, were survivors, Okay, and didn't fall to the uh, Greco-Roman, uh, you know, lifestyle. Although, I believe it was the Sadducees or the, one of them, they, they kind of added some Greco-Roman customs to their doctrine. But either way it goes, they were still of the circumcision. They, they were raised in the laws. It says, it was unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or to come unto one of another nation. Okay. But God have showed me that I should call no man common or unclean. Now, we always go through this. Okay. Christians love to say, well, that other, the, the, another nation is speaking of, you know, actual heathen. But no, it was unlawful to keep company with these Israelites who were basically looked at as castaways. And that word, another nation, as we always show you, is a, is a compound word, alos, phylos, alos, another. Goodness gracious. Alos and phylos, tribe, okay? Because there was an ongoing mindset amongst the Jews that Ultimately, these 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 Gentiles, you know, these other Israelites who weren't raised in the customs, who didn't fight, you know, with our our parents to keep, you know, the, the some sort of state of the Jews or, or fought for the temple. You were another tribe. You ain't even an Israelite, pretty much. You were unclean. You're common. OK, tribe in the New Testament, all persons descending from one of the 12 sons of the patriarch Jacob, a nation of people. OK, but what did he say? But God have showed me that I should call not call any man common or unclean. OK, now that word. For common. OK, it's koinos. And this is how the other Israelites were looked at. If you weren't of that stock, okay, who was in Jerusalem, you know, Judea, who, who, 
whose parents and don't descend from a people who didn't fall to the, you know, the, the, the Greeks and wasn't Hellenized, you were looked at as what? Or if you were of the Northern Kingdom, because that had, they, 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 Israel had looked at, you know, the Jews had looked at them as complete castaways. You're ordinary, common, by the Jews, unhallowed, profane, Levitically unclean. This is how these different Israelites who were raised in Greco-Roman customs, okay, or who were of the Northern Kingdom were looked at. They were looked at as unhallowed, Levitically unclean. So Cornelius in the Gentiles being brought in is not heathen being brought in. Paul's mission was to go and preach, okay, to the Israelites who were turning from idols in these different regions. All right, Galatians, the second chapter, tells you that. Galatians 2, okay, the apostles accept Paul, okay? Let's see here. Because there was a lot of friction, even amongst the believers in Yahawashai, on how we're going to go about going to these Gentiles who were scattered. Because it, it, it caused them a lot of hell, all right? But they had to do it, okay? Because the Gentiles received what? The sure mercies of David. The Gentiles were of the faith of Abraham. They were Israelites, okay? Just like Abraham was a son of God, but... He was raised worshiping idols, still a son of God, but he was restored to his legacy, the understanding of his legacy, okay, through grace, through favor of the most high, man, through his mediator, which was Melchizedek, okay, which is Yahawashai. So this is where a lot of you Christians get mixed up, and there's a lot of history that we hadn't, we didn't even go into because when you go to 1st Maccabees, we always go into this, okay? There's a lot of history in understanding why the Israelites are called heathen, why they're called uh, uh, uncircumcised. Okay? Okay? Let's see here. First Maccabees 1 and 11, in those days went there out of Israel, wicked men who persuaded many, saying, let us go and make a covenant with the heathen that are round about us. For since we departed from them, we have had much sorrow. So this is the sellouts. They were like, hell nah, we're going to have to bow. We're going to have to do what the Greeks say to do. So this device pleased them well. Then certain of the people were so forward herein that they went to the king who gave them license to do after the ordinances of the heathen, whereupon they built a place of exercise according to the customs of the heathen and made themselves uncircumcised and forsook the holy covenant and joined themselves to the heathen and were sold to do so. So for, for years, Israel fell into this category and they raised their children uncircumcised. They raised their children bowing to idols. That's why it says in 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter. 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, it says, you know, in the second verse that ye were Gentiles carried away of these dumb idols, even as ye were led. How were ye led to those idols? Just like Abraham, your father, your mother, you were raised up pretty much in a household where Greco-Roman customs, even though you were an Israelite. Just like you and me who are listening to this video, even though you're an Israelite, you were carried away of these dumb idols. And you were cast away. All right. And that first covenant pretty much kept you out of even being uh, uh, thought of to be brought back in. But through Yahweh Hamashiach. OK, you're now brought back in. Through faith which Abraham's whole story cuts anyone boasting in the law. Because remember, he was uncircumcised <laughs> when he received the promises, man. So he was a Gentile, okay? Galatians 2 and 6, or to 7, 
But contrarywise, when they saw that the gospel of the uncircumcision was committed unto me, and the gospel of the circumcision was unto Peter. For he that wrought effectually in the uh, uh, in Peter, in the apostleship of the circumcision. Now, what is that? The circumcision are the Jews who were raised in the customs, but believed on Yahawashai. Peter was the head of that. Okay. The same was mighty in me towards the Gentiles. And when James, Cephas, and John, who were Jews, see all Jews, stop letting these Christians get away with this narrative that the Jew, all the Jews denied Jesus. <laughs> or all the, you know, that, that's what they say. We know his name's not Jesus, right? James, Cephas, John. Okay, these are pillars in the church of the believers on Yahawashai. Who, they're Jews. They didn't deny Yahawashai. Okay. Who seemed to be pillars perceived that grace was given unto me. They gave me and Barnabas the right hands of fellowship that we should go unto the heathen and they unto the circumcision. So the uncircumcision are the Israelites who were in a heathen like state of mind. That's all the Israelites, the, 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 the Gentiles and the heathen are the same people. When you go into those who were being brought back in. Now you have the natural Gentiles, which are the heathen, but then you have the Israelites who were likened unto heathen and who were a no people. Okay? What did Peter say? In times past, you were not a people, but now are the people of Yahweh Bashim Shai. Okay? First Peter's two and nine, but ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who called you out of darkness. Well, what was the darkness? Following after these dumb idols until his marvelous light, which in times past were not a people. Okay? But now are the people of God which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. These are the Israelites. They were not a people. They were looked at as Gentiles, man. Okay? They were a no people. Okay? Not. All right? They were, they, they were not a people, man. Who obtained mercy. So you Christians are way out of the loop when it comes to the understanding of these scriptures. Acts the 13th chapter. This whole chapter is good, man. Might have to just read that whole thing one day. <laughs> this is what happened to the Jews. Acts 13 and 41. And behold, ye despisers and wonder and perish, for I work a work in your days which ye shall in no wise believe if a man declared unto you. Understanding how serious things were under that first covenant, to hear how the Gentiles would be brought back in, you wouldn't even believe it. To be scattered and brought back in merely through preaching, you wouldn't believe it. Okay? Let's see here. Verse 44, and the next Sabbath day came almost the whole city together to hear the word of the Most High, as Paul and Barnabas are preaching. But when the Jews saw the multitudes, they were filled with envy. Okay, not all the Jews, but the Jews who were unbelieving. Okay, they were moved with envy and spake against those things which were spoken by Paul, contradicting and blaspheming. The law, the law, the law, the law, the law, okay? It was even told, said that Paul was speaking against the law, but you would have to understand Paul's position. The Gentiles were just brought back in contrary to that first covenant, but through grace, okay? Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said, it was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken unto you. 
Now let's read that in NL NLT. Then Paul and Barnabas spoke boldly and declared it was necessary that we first preach the word of God to you Jews. Why? Because the tents of Judah had to be raised up first as we read the prophecy. Peter and the rest of the disciples fulfilled that, but the rest of them didn't want to follow, right? But since you have rejected it and judged yourselves unworthy of eternal life through Yahweh Shai, we will offer it to the Gentiles because they seem to be more on fire and fervent in the downtrodden state that they were, not raised in the customs, uncultivated, but they were grafted back into the tree. They're still olives like the rest of the olives, but some of the natural branches broke off. The natural branches being the Jews, the Gentiles were grafted in. And the Gentiles represent an uncultivated wild plant, branch. Okay? And what is your cult what cultivates you? Your culture. The Gentiles grew up without their culture just like Abraham. They needed mercy just like David. For 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 so hath the Lord commanded us, saying, I have set thee to be a light unto the Gentiles, that thou shouldest be salvation unto the ends of the earth. And when the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and glorified the Lord. And as many as were ordained to eternal life believed. So here it is. You're telling me that the, the natural Gentiles are going to or ordained to eternal life? No. These are Israelites, okay, who were brought back into the fold contrary to the law, but through faith, contrary to the first covenant, but through mercy. Okay? And the word of the Lord was published throughout all the region, but the Jews stirred up the devout and honorable women and chief men of the city and raised persecution against Paul and Barnabas. So there you go. Those are the Jews that deny Yahweh Shai, but all the Jews didn't deny Yahweh Shai because Peter, James, John, you know, Andrew, and the rest, you know, Jew, they were all Israelites. They were Jews. Okay, it's just that. The understanding went out, okay, and salvation was eventually opened, okay, after the Jews were gathered, who the Lord, Yahweh Shai wanted, of that, that pack, that batch that was there, who followed him, then it was opened up to pretty much go preaching to the Gentiles, man, after Yahweh Shai, <clears throat> after Yahweh Shai died and his blood was shed, he eventually went back to the right hand side and, and he sent down the Holy Spirit. Okay, and that's where Peter was the first to preach. All right, that sermon at Pentecost, man. But there's so much history that if you don't understand it, you're going to be caught up in the spirit of this guy right here, Mr. I don't know. He don't know any history. He don't know any prophecy. But what he does know is that God is going to give salvation and the new covenant is opened up to all nations, which is a damn lie, man. Lord willing, we'll be back with more information. Shalom.